Are you planning to implement warehouse technology, but you're not sure when to implement, or rather, how do you determine the right time to implement the different warehouse technologies? Hi, this is Martin from Sizer Warehouse Technology, and in this video, we are going to deep dive into learning the right way to determine the best time to implement warehouse technology. Stay tuned to learn how. As John C. Maxwell has said, the timing of your decision is just as important as the decision you make. Timing is a crucial part of decision making, and timing can make or break your company. Fortunately, the best time to implement warehouse technology can be determined by three simple frameworks, namely the S-curve of innovation, the technology adoption life cycle, and the hype cycle. These three frameworks depict the natural evolution of technology, which in return will help us figure out the risks associated with adopting new technology and the pros and cons of adopting technology at different points in time. So let's get into each one. First, the S-curve of innovation. Now this concept enables you to determine how mature a specific technology is. These stages include ferment stage, takeoff stage, maturity stage, and discontinuity stage. The S-curve is graphed by a technology's performance in relation to time and each stage is characterized as follows. Ferment is the first stage. This is the time where technology is totally new. Evolution is slow, there's a high rate of innovation and research and development. Competition is also very tough. Takeoff is the second stage. This is where technology has manifested its ability to solve a problem in the market. Early majority of adopters start to invest in it, it constantly gets improvements, and it manages to cross the chasm of death. Now the chasm of death is the transition between capturing early adopters and the early majority but more about this in the next framework. Third stage, maturity. This is when the general public adopts the technology. There's very strong competition across few large players, sales reach the physical limit, product becomes standardized, and innovation slows down to very little. Last stage, discontinuity. This time, customers start to abandon the technology and move on to a new solution or innovation. And that results to a new technology life cycle, and so, a new S-curve is born and disruptive innovation occurs. So, when is the best time to invest in warehouse technology? The best time to adopt is during the takeoff stage. Because as market trends show, acquiring 16% of adopters makes success and growth very likely. And this happens in the takeoff stage. Innovation and growth also moves at a very fast pace, product improvements are rapid, and customer service is usually terrific. So why not the maturity stage? It may sound safer to bet on a technology on its peak but it is also the stage where it is closest to being obsolete. And adopting a technology that's on the brink of obsolescence is the worst idea. So remember, you snooze, you lose. Second framework is the technology adoption lifecycle. Now this concept, as Everett M. Rogers explains it, is based on identifying the personality of adopters and accepting a new innovation. The adopters are divided into five groups, namely the innovators, the early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggards. The graph looks like this. The first 2.5% of the population are called innovators. They are the thought leaders, the first to adopt new technology, and the youngest class of adopters. They have extremely high social standing, high education, and high financial fluidity, which explains why they are very open to risks. Even if the technology fails, they can absorb the loss and learn from it. This happens on the ferment stage of the S-curve. Next are called the early adopters, which makes up 13.5% of the adopter population. They also are fairly young, well-educated, high reputation, and financially sound. They are fairly open to risk and change, but less likely compared to innovators. Finally, they also are characterized by thought leadership. Next is a point called the chasm of death. When technology crosses this point and is being adopted by the next group of adopters called early majority, the technology is believed to meet success. Now talking about the early majority, this group makes up 34% of the adopters and are inspired by innovators and early adopters to embrace the innovation. There's hardly any thought leadership on this group, but adoption of new tech matters to maintain a decent status. This process also takes a lot longer to happen compared to the first two groups. This happens during the takeoff stage of the S-curve and they still do rack the benefits before the tech matures. The fourth group is the late majority, which makes up 34% of the remaining population. They are late to adopt an innovation because of factors like below average status, little financial ease, and very little thought leadership. When this group adopts an innovation, the technology is about to reach the maturity phase. Which brings us to the last group to adopt, the laggards. They are the last group to adopt and are characterized by being resistant to change. They have no thought leadership, low social standing, and almost no financial fluidity. When they adopt an innovation, the technology is on the discontinuity phase already. So for you who is planning to adopt warehouse technology, 
This is a view of technology adoption in relation to time and attitude of the adopter. This can help you evaluate if you are too late or too early, and if you would be able to obtain any value from adopting a certain warehouse technology. To give you a better idea, here is a graph of both curves intertwined. The early adopters and early majority tend to get the most value differing in the risk involved when adopting a technology. Since the innovation has already crossed the chasm of death when it's adopted by the early majority, risk involved is less compared to the early adopters. So it is optimal to time your adoption between these two. And for the innovators, they contain the most risk, so it might not be the best group to be in. Finally, the last framework is called the hype cycle. Officially named as Gartner Hype Cycle for Merging Technologies, the Hype Cycle is a research methodology created by Gartner to follow a technology's life cycle as hype or reality. It shows graphically the maturity and adoption of an emerging technology, and it helps businesses figure out the usefulness of a technology in a real business case scenario and if there are new opportunities to exploit. This is what it looks like. Now the graph shows the expected direction of a technology over a certain period of time or maturity in relation to its visibility to the adopters. The first phase is the innovation trigger, which is the conceptualization of technology. There is no proven market study and only prototypes exist. There's also media promotion and demonstrations. Second phase is the peak of inflated expectations. This is the time where the early adopters start to implement it. There's a lot of publicity here, but technology is still unstable when it comes to success rate. There are many companies that embrace the innovation, but many others still don't. Third phase is the trough of disillusionment. Flaws, failures, and benefits are discovered here. Underperformers fail to continue, while performers innovate to address problems and improve product or solution. Fourth phase is the slope of enlightenment. Consumers in the industry understand the scope and potential benefits of the technology. Increasing number of companies implement the tech to test it to their needs, and second and third generation of products may release here. Last and fifth phase is the plateau of productivity. This is the time where the technology is widely adopted. The tech's reputation is well established and scope is well understood. Benchmarks are also set to assess product's value. The hype cycle helps businesses by telling which tech is just hype or reality. It differentiates technologies that have tall claims and no proof, the ones that are viable, and the ones that are promising with time. This helps businesses make the right investment in the right technology at the right time. Now, Analyzing this cycle, the most attractive stage is the peak of inflated expectations because the hype lures you to adopt technology. But remember, hype is just hype unless proven, and this may not be the right stage to embrace the technology. Fortunately, after a few time, the hype disappears as it goes through the trough of disillusionment. This is the stage where the technology opens itself to large-scale adoption. Since the reality of the technology's potential has been set, only the companies that can utilize the technology's capabilities will stay and that leads to the slope of enlightenment, where the technology will end up being standardized. The plateau of productivity is the last stage, and to reap the benefits of this stage, implementing a technology between the trough of disillusionment and slope of enlightenment is optimal. This graph is the latest hype cycle Gartner has released. I will also link the hype cycle page down below if you want more information. Now, these three frameworks are the fundamental basis to analyze when to adopt a new warehouse technology. It helps warehouse managers and other decision makers to make timely decisions, reduce risk, increase return on investment, and embrace the warehouse digital transformation. Warehouse are faced with so much new technology. These frameworks will guide you to decide when the right time to invest. As always, I hope you like and learn from our video. We have other videos that talks about warehouse technologies, so be sure to check them out. We are uploading every month, so hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed, share it to your coworkers and friends, and I will see you in the next video.